great. I'm going to talk today about the key to who will be left behind when the rapture occurs or the catching up of the body of Christ. Um, in other words, what is the determining factor whether somebody's going to go up or not uh, when the Lord catches up his church? Uh, who will be left behind? What is going to determine that? You can turn your Bible to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. If I can get to it here, the wind's kind of being a little contrary today. But that's okay. We love the woods. Love to be out here in what God created and not in some stupid building that man created. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him. Okay? The rapture. Whatever you want to call it. The catching up. That's what it is. That ye be not soon shaken in mind, nor be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Uh, I'll continue here. I'll get back to that in a minute. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, many people are going to this passage and they're stopping right there and they're saying, see, the Antichrist is going to be revealed before the body of Christ leaves, so therefore that overthrows the pre-trib rapture. They don't keep reading. Every single one of these false prophets, they refuse to read the next couple verses because it overthrows their wicked satanic doctrine. Verse 5, Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? Paul's referring back to his first letter in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and chapter 5. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. The Antichrist be revealed in whose time? His time. Who's the his? Jesus Christ. Right now, this time that we are in, you get saved, you're in the body of Christ. Somebody in the future, that's not true. Someone in the Old Testament, they weren't in Christ. The only people that are in Christ are Christians right now in this time period. Verse 7, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. That's the body of Christ there. Holy Spirit is letting, hindering, in other words, the Antichrist from showing up, but... The Antichrist can't show up until the body of Christ is removed. Remember that the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ are one and the same being. Okay? Remember that. They're not two different beings. Unless you're Trinitarian. Verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord, Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. See Revelation 19 if you want to see that being brought to fruition. Verse 9, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Again, compare that to Revelation 13. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received, here's the key, they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Wait a second. This is Pauline epistles. Okay? Understand that. This is Pauline epistles saying, there's a condition there on salvation. It doesn't say they didn't believe. They had unbelief and therefore they didn't get saved. It says they received not a love of the truth that they might be saved. I am a Christian, but I reject all sorts of things that appear in the King James Bible and add all sorts of things that are not in the King James Bible. No, you're not a Christian. You receive not the love of the truth that you might be saved. Well, I can be a Christian. We can agree to disagree on lots of doctrinal issues. No, we can't. No, we can't. There's only four things in the New Testament in the Pauline epistles that we can agree to disagree on. Diet, celebrating of holidays, um, head coverings. I always forget the fourth one. Uh, those are the things where it says, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Not a big deal. We can agree to disagree on those things. Okay? But you can't agree to disagree on major points of doctrine. You'll never see that. Paul says, Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. He doesn't say, well, just you know, go together and, and worship at the same church. You know, he doesn't say that. Let's continue. 
Verse 11. They received not love of the truth in verse 10, that they might be saved. Look at verse 11. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Isn't that interesting? They receive not a love of the truth. What do they want then? A lie. God obliges them. It's been well said that the worst thing God can do to you is to let you have what you want or let you have your way. And that's very true. I don't want the truth that the Trinity is not found in Scripture. I don't want the truth that the King James Bible is God's perfect word. I don't want the truth of there's no church buildings. Hello. Uh, yeah, I'm not in church right now. It's terrible. It's a Sunday as well. Oh, man, I'm so unfaithful. Isn't that just awful? I mean, what a terrible place to be out here in what God created. I should be in what man created, right? Wrong. <laughs> you see, there's all kinds of things that people do. They say, I'm a Christian, and yet they reject truth. Isn't that something? And what does God give them? Exactly what they want. In the time of Jacob's trouble, you will be worshiping a man. And he will be a trinity, I might add. Antichrist, the beast, in other words. The false prophet. And Satan, the dragon. Three of them on the earth. A holy trinity? Oh yeah, yeah. I guarantee you. But let's continue. For this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. These people have pleasure in unrighteousness. That's why they don't like it when you say, you need to repent of sin. All repentance is no part of the gospel. There's nothing about repentance in the gospel. That's a lie. That's a false doctrine. Why? Are there certain sins you're not, you don't want to give up? I guarantee you, I love to be told about repenting of sin. I love it when the Lord says, hey, clean that up. Get that out of your life. It's hurting you. All sin is negative. I mean, what, what kind of a weird God do you serve if he comes along and he says, hey, um, you, you know, you've got some really bad things in your life that's, that's poisoning your health and, and destroying you financially and whatever else, but you don't need to give those up. I won't even convict you of those things. You can just go on and continue in those sins and not even bother. What kind of a God do you serve? you weird people out there that say there's no repentance of sin to be part of salvation. Sounds like you believe a lie and that you love a lie and that you don't love the truth. Huh. I thought that uh, the people that are lost, it's just because of their unbelief. Salvation is automatic. It's just, it's there and whoever wants salvation, all you got to do is just believe it. You don't even have to ask God. You just take salvation. You say, I believe I'm saved. Well, that was great. They're going to be left behind and go right into the time of Jacob's trouble. And ironically, these same people that pervert the gospel are teaching more and more of them that they are going to go into the time of Jacob's trouble. There is no pre-trib rapture, they say. Well, they're absolutely right for themselves. Isn't that strange? Isn't it strange that they don't want the truth? They have received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. They love lies. Verse 13, But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and turning from unbelief to belief. It's not what it says. It says belief of the truth. There it is again. Belief of the truth. Oh, that just sounds like such a tough condition. Oh, I just, I just can't believe it. I mean, uh, uh, you, you, know, you either say a prayer and then you're in, or you just don't have to say a prayer and you just believe mentally. Um, it's not what it says there. Notice it says, uh, God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation. You don't choose God. He chooses you. You come to Him on His terms. You say, what are those terms? It is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save Church people that are faithfully attend and are there every time the doors are open. No, um, sinners. You want to get saved? Are you a sinner? Do you deserve hell? You say, yeah, I'm a, I'm a rotten individual. Do you think you could ever make it into heaven by your own good works? You say, are you kidding me? Never going to happen. Okay, then you qualify. Come to the Lord, ask Him to save you. And it's up to Him to decide. 
It's up to him to look at your heart and say yes or no. He chooses you. And now, when you get saved, you say, uh, does your life change? Um, yeah. You know what the biggest thing is that you'll change? Where I will judge somebody, whether they're saved or lost? How do they respond to the truth? Do they have a love of the truth? Or is there a kind of a, well, you know, I know what you're saying, but I can't really totally, you know, uh, uh -huh. Let's continue. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. He called you? Huh. You didn't make an intellectual decision, in other words. He called you. Interesting. Verse 15. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Don't compromise, in other words. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Huh. You know, if your uh, system of belief showed up in the last 100 years, it's false. You say, well, but praise God, brother, we got a Baptist church here, an independent, fundamental, local Baptist church, local New Testament church whatever that is, and we got this thing, and it dates back to the 1800s. Old time religion. We got the old time. Um, how about going back 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago? Where are the Baptist churches? They're not there. Well, that's because things, things got better? Really? Really? You know, if you study church history, you'll see that the true saved church has always been a very small number of people. And um, they usually met out in places like this, what God created. You'll get it eventually if you're saved. Revelation chapter 3, turn there. Revelation chapter 3, beginning in verse 14. Instruction in righteousness, very great instruction in righteousness for the day in which we now live. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works. You mean God would judge somebody for their works? They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, Titus chapter 1? Huh. That they should repent and do do good or do works meet for repentance, the Bible talks about. The book of Acts. Hmm. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Um, what is the characteristic of something that you spew out of your mouth? You know? Um, it's a uh, foreign matter. Well, you say, no, it's, it was in the body. Uh, well, it was inside the stomach in the body. It had the appearance of being part of the body, but it was just foreign matter in the stomach. You don't uh, puke up an arm or a leg or a toe or something. You throw up things that are foreign matter in the stomach down there. You know, there's a lot of people that are going to get puked out when the Lord says, come up hither. Why? Um, because they receive not the love of the truth. That's why. You say, no, no, it's just belief. It's just belief. Just believe. Only believe. And yet they'll take these verses. They'll go to Acts chapter 16 with the, the jailer and they'll say, See, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, now shall be saved. That's all they said to him. Yeah, the guy was about ready to kill himself. You know? And they said, Stop. And you, you realize what it's going to cost this poor guy when he goes back to work after he got saved? Another jailer that the you know, disciples got out of the prison, he goes back and they kill him. Do you realize what that jailer was facing? What kind of a changed life that man had? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's just simple. It's just a belief. Oh, tell that to that guy. Just about ready to kill himself. He gets saved in his whole house with him. And he has to go back to work and face his bosses. And he's in a military type of position. Where you, know, where you give up your, your rights and things at any time. Not just modern American military but or modern whatever military. You better believe those Romans would have killed you. Of course they would have. And the guy lets a bunch of prisoners escape. 
and converts to what they were in prison for? And you want to tell me that his life didn't change? You're crazy in the head. But let's continue. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with monetization on YouTube. Ah, well, excuse me. I read that wrong. <clears throat> increased with goods and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich. And white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve that, they, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And if you tell me that that doesn't, uh, that doesn't relate to the Christians today, uh, you're quite foolish. Sorry, I got my son on camera over here acting silly and things. All right, son. Hey, quiet down, please. Quiet. All right, sorry about that. We're back. Chapter 4. So you see that I believe, instruction in righteousness, uh, that the church ends in a time of apostasy. Obviously, you, you don't need Revelation chapter 3 to prove that. The time will come when they will not endorse sound doctrine. You know, there's, I mean, there's so many scriptures. First and Second Timothy talk a lot about it, about people not enduring sound doctrine and whatever else in the end times. Certainly. Now let's look at chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. And, the, and round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders, sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Okay? Very, very interesting, because, you know, I believe that when we get there, it's going to look something, not the trees here, but it's going to look something like this, but it'll be a sea of glass. It's going to be nice and cold. Can't wait. <laughs> uh, the, the Lord, his, his realm is in the north, the Bible talks about. The sides of the north, back in Isaiah chapter 14. Satan was trying to take over it there, Lucifer. But just an interesting little side note. But again, we see this thing here of John gets caught up. And I've done plenty of studies on it and things. I mean, typology definitely is there. It's just, it's, it's an amazing study. When you look at the, the sound of a trumpet, the voice that sounds like a trumpet, and the Bible says two times, the trump of God, not the trumpet of an angel, the trump of God sounds and calls up his sheep. Jesus says in John chapter 10 about how that my sheep hear my voice and I call them by name and lead them out. You know, I mean, it's, a, it's an amazing thing to study. But again, what happens there? The Laodicean people, the people that don't have love of the truth, that say all the things, I'm, I'm rich, I'm increased with goods, you're concerned about your job, that's why you don't really want to get saved, you see, because then all of a sudden your co-workers are going to turn against you. You see, you can play Christian online uh, or in your little church building, but you don't want to have to actually go down and have a testimony, a changed life there, and go against people that are using profanity on the job site and whatever else. You don't want that because that would, you know, you might actually even lose your job. You know, you certainly wouldn't get promotions, you know, if you had a, a changed life testimony. You know, so you got to kind of avoid that stuff there, you know. You see? I'm, I've been around for a pretty good amount of time, okay? I'm 43 years of age, all right? Um, I've seen some things in my life. I've talked to a lot of people, all right? I don't uh, show a lot of my witnessing that I do in person. I don't show it on camera. I mean, what better way to ruin the moment of somebody coming under conviction and you're sticking a camera in their face and saying, I'm going to put this on YouTube? You know, yeah, brilliant, but, you know, whatever. 
But the whole point is I've, I've seen the excuses that men make. I've seen the, the things that people come up with and they say, um, you know, well, you know, I, I don't know if I'm ready yet and whatever else. And you know, it all revolves around one thing. They don't want the truth. They want to have pleasure in unrighteousness. That's why the world hates Christians so much. Because we come along, we spoil the fun. We say, hey, you shouldn't be getting drunk. They say, what's well, New Year's Eve? Yeah, well, New Year's Eve, there's, there's no scripture in there saying you got to celebrate the new year, you know, whatever. What are you doing there? You're getting drunk. Your drunkenness spoils the fun, doesn't it? You're such a killjoy, you know? Coming along and saying to a woman that's, you know, dressed and looks like a man, you say, hey, you know, you ought to put a dress on. You ought to look modest. You know, oh, that just ruins things. And, you know, or if you have a wife that is dresses modestly and you take her out in public and, and it makes other women feel uncomfortable and we shouldn't do that. You know, and, and saying that only the King James Bible, you know, if you speak English and, oh, come on now that, you know, and rock music is wrong. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's satanic. You see what I'm saying? Why do people reject Jesus Christ? Because Jesus Christ said in John chapter 14, verse six, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the father, but by me. What did he say to Pilate? Pilate's there and he says, what is truth to Jesus? He's looking at him. Jesus Christ is truth personified. And some of you don't like that. You want your little, uh, your little Jesus that uh, doesn't judge things and doesn't have such a problem. I mean, it, it always cracks me up. People get so offended at some of the things I preach and, and sins I come out against and rebuke. Do you think God's going to be less harsh than me? The Bible says, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Do you get terror from me? Who am I? Hey, you don't like the video, shut it off. All right, I'm not going to come to your house and beat your door in or anything. Whatever, you don't want to watch me, just go do something else. But you're not going to get away from God. And someday you're going to stand before a holy, righteous, pure God that never messed up one time. I've messed up plenty. God doesn't. And you're going to deal with him. Oh, I just, I don't, I don't think I like that. Then go into the time of Jacob's trouble. Don't worry about leaving. And it, it, again, it cracks me up. These, these posties, they come out and they'll say, oh, we're going to have to suffer. We're going to have to suffer. You know, the church has got it so easy right now. And I, and I laugh at that time and time again. And I say, you have it easy. I don't. Other Christians don't. Family members turning against us, losing jobs, poor health. Financial problems. You, we got all kinds of problems. I can't wait till the Lord says, come up hither. But some of these posties, you know, uh, oh, you know, it's, it's not that bad right now. Well, maybe not for you because you're lost. <laughs> There's that truth again. Boy, it stings, doesn't it? I mean, you probably ought to make some videos exposing me now because I brought out some truth. That wasn't so good of me. You know, you know, yeah, yeah, let's, let's do it. go ahead. Finally, let's go to Romans, the book of Romans. Or no, not Romans. I was thinking about another verse there. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5. Excuse me. I mean, Romans is a good place to go to if you want to get more scripture and things. Proving what I'm saying. If you want more truth, you know. Ephesians chapter 5. And we'll go... Call 911 here. <laughs> Verses 9 through 11. Very interesting portion of Scripture here. You know, you'll see that a lot in, in uh, different port parts of Scripture. You'll see the thing of verses 9 through 11 are usually very interesting. But uh, check this out. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 9 through 11. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all, is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Do you have the fruit of the Spirit? No, I don't have to because I have a profession of faith. I don't need to have any fruit. I don't need to bear any fruit. You know, I can just profess that I am saved and that's it. doesn't matter. Oh, that's not what it says. The fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, not self-righteousness. You see, self-righteousness is... I'm a good person. I, you know, I don't deserve to go to hell. Um, 
I don't have to come to God and, and ask Him to save me. I don't need to repent of sin. That's self-righteousness. Okay? Righteousness, God's righteousness, if you're displaying God's righteousness, that's a totally different thing. And what will it lead to? Truth? A love of the truth? Yeah. God's truth. Do you love God's truth? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Are you willing to make a fool of yourself to be called a King James only? I'll be honest with you. I'm not actually King James only. I'm really not. I use all the versions. I like to attack the other versions. I'm a King James Bible believer. All matters of faith and practice right here. Hmm. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Proving? You mean you would actually take stands for uh, absolute truth? Absolutely. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. That's what we do as Bible-believing Christians. And you know what? Let me just be real straight with you here. I'm looking forward to the time when I no longer have to fellowship with you people out there that are lost and have heard the truth over and over and over and over again. You people that watch my videos and cut up my videos and try to make me a liar and, and wish for my downfall, I'm looking forward to no longer having to fellowship with you people. And I don't even, you know, when I say fellowship, understand what I'm saying. I can't wait for the time when I get to leave. And you know, deep down, I know you're looking forward to it as well. When there is no more Brian Denlinger or other Bible believers like myself online. We're gone. We're taken out of the way. Now you can have your system. You can be here on this earth. You can watch your filthy movies or sports. You can have your drunkenness. You can have your profanity. You can have your new versions or your Catholic friends. <laughs> you can have whatever you want and we're gone. But if you have any sense about you, you will realize, yeah, the key to whether or not I'm going to go up. How much do I love the truth? You know, I had to come to a place in my life where I realized that my profession that I once had as a little boy, it was false. I wasn't really saved. And it was a glorious, glorious day when I finally died to myself. And I said, you know what? I need to be born again. And I got down on my hands and my knees and I cried out to God and I said, God, I don't know if I'm saved. I don't think I am. I, I need to know. I, I want the truth. I don't want lies anymore. You know, I was a professional artist. And I noticed over and over and over again, going to art galleries, art shows, and being around that whole world and everything else. And there were so many lies in it. There was so much deception. And I used to watch television. I used to watch movies. And I remember the one, th the one time I watched a Hollywood movie and they said, they said at the beginning, they said, everything in this movie, even the hardest parts to understand, is really, it really happened. It's really true. And I was so fascinated by this movie. It was called The Ghost and the Darkness. It was about a, a bridge that was built over in, in Africa back in the 1800s. And there were these, these lions that, that uh, were, they were eating all kinds of people and stuff like this. It was called The Man Eaters of Sava was the book. And, um, and uh, I, I was so interested in this, I actually read the book, and it wasn't even close to what the movie said. They lied. And I got to a point where I realized, you know what? I don't want these lies anymore. I don't want to live the lie that I've been living, professing to be a Christian when I wasn't one. I don't want that life. And I also don't want the lies of what I'm part of all the fake stuff and everything else and all the, all the nonsense materialism that the world had to offer me. And I said, you know what? I don't even care. And I basically walked away from the art world because I wanted the truth. 
If you're here today watching this thing, let me ask you a question. How much truth do you want? Will you come to the source of all truth? Right here? You say, but there's so many different denominations, there's so many different people, and they all disagree. Yeah, because they don't have a love of the truth. The Holy Spirit is not there to lead them and to guide them into all truth. You know, when Jesus was with his disciples, we're not going to go there for sake of time here, but when Jesus was with his disciples in John chapter 16, he said, they said, how are you going to you know, show yourself, reveal yourself to us and not to the lost world? And he said, I'm going to send the spirit of truth. That's what separates us. Okay? So that is going to be it. I do hope that you have been challenged by this. Um, I've had a lot of people that are false converts, I've had them get saved. And that's a joy to my heart because I was once that myself. I was a false convert. I was trusting in my religious upbringing and whatever else to save me. Yeah, it's so funny because these people that attack me, they'll say salvation is just a belief. And yet that's what I once had. And yet they'll call me lost, but I once had what they now claim is the true salvation. And they claim you can't lose it. That's kind of a weird thing. But you know, I had to come to a place where I said no more of that. I don't want that. I want the truth. And praise God, He saved me. God saved me. I didn't save myself with my intellectual belief. And since then, the Lord has shown me more truth than, than I can even handle sometimes. And I praise the Lord for it. I know that the day comes when the Lord says, come up hither, I'm leaving. Do you know that? You say, well, you know, I'm part of the, I, we're part of the Catholic Church and we would have a, some disagreements with you. And, and Do you know that you're going to go up? Do you know that you, if you died today, do you have an assurance of salvation? That's what life is about, brethren. Not brethren. <laughs> That's what life is about, friend. If you're a brethren, well, you already have the assurance of salvation. I'm saying, if you're out there watching it, what's more important than your eternity? Not one thing. So that is going to be it. I do hope you've been challenged by this video. Thank you very much for watching.